Hey guys, today we're winding back to 2017 to take a look at this Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 set, The Milano vs. The Abelisk. This came out in March of 2017 and was on shelves for about 10 months when it retired at the end of December of that year. It retailed for $50 with 460 pieces and came with five exclusive minifigs. Now this obviously recreates the opening of the movie, although we don't really see the Milano so much at the beginning as we do the minifigs and of course the Abelisk. So it's definitely a cool set. I think it's aged really well and let's start breaking it down to take a closer look. Star-Lord is our first minifigure and he has the same exact torso as Gamora from this set who we'll talk about in a minute, but neither of them have accurate torsos. In the movie, their undershirts are actually dark red, not gray. So we're already starting off kind of in a deficit. I really do like the printed legs. These came on several figures for Marvel, including Star-Lord and Gamora here, Hawkeye and some others, and the helmet here is the real standout. Star-Lord's helmet appeared for the last time in this set, at least as of this video, and it looks really good here with the white around the eyes and the red detailing. It's just so great. As far as the accessories go, he does have the dark version of his blasters, and on his back here, we've got a little jetpack belt of a binocular piece, a one by one black stud, and then a bracket that goes around the neck. We of course can lift that off so that you can see what the printing looks like on the back of the torso. I actually like that printing better than what we got uh, with the build here. So I actually display mine without it, but it does look pretty good. And finally, we can lift the hair up so you can see it's a regular face on one side, the same head that was used on Bucky Barnes at the time as well as Star-Lord here. There's an angry face on the other side. Then of course we can put the helmet on and flip that around to show what it looks like. So it's pretty crazy. This is the last time we would get the Star-Lord's helmet piece in a minifigure set, but hopefully that changes down the line someday. Now, Gamora is basically the same figure as Star-Lord based off of the legs and torso, but she does have the green hands. She's got a sword here. She does have the black hair with the pink highlights in it that look really good. Then, of course, the head is reversible as well. So we've got a smile on one side and then an angry fighting face on the other. Definitely a cool figure as far as your Marvel completionists go, but not really an accurate one as far as the movie goes. This set also marks the last time we would get Drax in his shirtless mode, at least as of this video being recorded. And this was awesome because you got unique tattoo arm printing on both arms, which looked really, really good, as does the torso. He's got the blue Guardian's outfit legs this time around, and as opposed to the first time where his mouth was closed, this time we have an angry face for Drax. He's of course got two knives, and then he has the same backpack build that Star-Lord had. I forgot that I didn't put it back on Star-Lord but once again just like star lord i think he does look significantly better without the backpack on because you can see all of that great torso printing on the back so definitely a standout figure and pretty valuable by today's standards Nebula is a prisoner in this set, so she comes with handcuffs, but I've got them off to the side there so it doesn't block the torso printing. The torso printing is very similar to how she looked from Guardians Volume 1, except this time she has some battle damage on there because she's uh, lived some life between the two movies. That being said, the other big change on this figure is the head. For Guardians 1, it's a dark blue head with light blue in the center, but this time around, it's a light blue head with dark blue in the center. So definitely a big change and a really cool figure in the end. And finally, we have the Baby Groot micro figure. I guess this is a micro figure. Lego hasn't ever really done anything quite like it for the Marvel theme, so I'm not sure what we're going to call it. But it is very cool with the printing on the front. No printing on the back, of course. But yeah, I really like this one, and you can see that he's got two little fists there that can clip into pieces like this. So we have these like little flash bombs that we see in the set that he can clip into, and we also get this, which I think is one of the batteries from the movie. I had to sub out some pieces, but that's generally what the build looks like. But overall, it is pretty cool and definitely one of the more desirable parts of this set to get a baby Groot figure. Getting the Abelisk as a build is something really cool in this set. Of course, it's that pink tentacle monster from the beginning of the movie, and this is not super accurate in terms of scale or size, but it is a really cool build nonetheless, and you can move the arms to have the whole thing kind of flail around. That's pretty cool, and the mouth can open wide or close. So, 
It's definitely pretty memorable for the movie. I really like the stickers that we have here. I mean, hey, I know Lego fans don't love stickers, but I do think they look pretty good here to add some detail to the environment. And I think it's cool to have something for the Guardians to fight against, which definitely is a big winning point for this set. And finally, we have the Milano, which is the smallest minifigure scale Milano Lego has ever given us. We've got a lot of stickers here on the side, up front, on the back wings, so definitely a sticker heavy set, but it does look pretty good. Now, unfortunately, I lost one of these side tabs along the way, but we do have like a landing gear on the bottom that looks really good. And as far as play features go, you can see that there are these bombs. And if you press down the Technic piece that's sticking here, it kind of drops the bombs out. And those are just kind of brick built and that's pretty cool. We do have some stud shooters up top, which of course you just push this button in and it shoots the stud out. And then of course we have a printed canopy, which is nice. And we can open that up and it's pretty amazing how many guardians you can fit inside. So if you can allow Nebula to hold Baby Groot, you can actually fit every minifigure that comes in this set inside. It is a very tight squeeze and it's nothing like we see in the movie, but it is really nice. The only downside is you have all these accessories that you don't really have anywhere to put them. So it's easy to lose accessories for this set because there's so many, but I wish that they could have come up with a way to like store these on the bottom or maybe have like a hatchback here that could open to put your pieces in. But regardless, it's still very, cool and I think that Lego did a really good job of scaling this down for minifigure scale and keeping it at a $50 price point. So with that being said, let's zoom out and I'll give you my final opinions on this classic set. All right, guys, let me know what you think of this set in the comments down below. I think it's aged pretty well, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. So drop a comment down below. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. Check out my other Lego Guardians videos and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Well, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and maybe check out one of my other videos listed here.